Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Troy Belt riding mower that I bought on Marketplace. The seller said, oh, it just needs gas. So we're going to open the hood here and, and see what it looks like. And we're going to see what kind of surprises it has in store. Today, we're looking at this Troy Belt. It's a TB42 model. And I bought this. And the seller said that, oh, it runs good. I cleaned the carburetor. All you have to do is put gas in it. Well, I opened the hood, I looked at it. If you would put gas in it, it would just come right out. For some reason, they had the cover off of it. The gas tank is out of it. Maybe they wanted to drain the gas out of the tank and, and put it in something else. I don't know. And of course, they have the cover off. Who knows why? But here's the cover. So, now I knew all this before I bought it. I knew it was disassembled. Yeah, but it's a shame. Otherwise, the tractor looks pretty nice. Everything else is in, in pretty good shape on it. So, we're going to see if this thing will start at all. The first thing I'm going to do is spray some gum out carburetor cleaner in there and crank it over and see if it will fire up. I'm going to do that before I even worry about the gas tank. Because it doesn't need a gas tank to run. It helps a lot, but it's not needed. Now, on this particular Troy built, the engine that comes on this is actually a Chinese manufactured engine. Supposedly, it's a clone of a Honda, like a Honda GX series engine. And I'm not real familiar with those particular engines, but it's very possible. But you can see here, it's not anything like a Briggs & Stratton. On a Briggs & Stratton, the dipstick tube is back here, and the starter's up here. And the head is totally different. The exhaust comes out the side instead of out the bottom. You know, so it's not, it's not related to a Briggs & Stratton at all. In this country, they call them a power mower engine. And on certain models... It says that right on top of the, the label, right on top of the engine. On this one here, it's labeled as a Troy built engine. And, uh, you know, it's got this emission stuff here. But it's, there's not very much information about what this engine actually is. So let's see if we can get this thing to even start up at all. So. My favorite, gum out carburetor cleaner. Because engines that will run, will run on this. This does not hurt them like starting fluid does. Make sure my feet are not under the deck. Well, it does run. Hopefully that oil is just from sitting. So it doesn't sound bad. So I guess we'll uh, hook up the car, hook up the gas tank, put some gas in it once. Now, on these MTDs, they like to use these giant wire ties. And you have to cut this to get the gas tank out. Then you got to find something to put on it to hold it back in. There is some little pieces of, it looks like pieces of a gas cap seal inside this tank. And 
And no, actually, they look like bugs. They look like bugs in there. What happens is you get any bugs in there, they like to get down in the tube where the gas comes out. Then you have a problem where it runs for five or ten minutes and then it wants to stall out because the gas isn't flowing fast enough. So we're going to blow this out real quick. As long as you do this with the cap off, you won't hurt anything. You want to try to make sure that there's nothing left inside the tank. Right now, there appears to be a little twig laying in there. And uh, because of the way that this, this inlet is shaped, it has it, like a tube that goes down inside there so the gas doesn't splash back out as easily. It also makes it that you can't turn it upside down and just have whatever's in there fall back out because it gets stuck behind the tube. So we're going to stick this down in here and I'm going to find, see if I can find some kind of wire tie or something to hold this in. So I do happen to have a pack of these 24 inch heavy duty cable ties. I'm not sure if it's going to be long enough, but I might have to use two, but at least I have some big ones here. They are available at Harbor Freight. One's not going to be enough. All right, so we got the gas tank back in, just like it was from the way it was made. Now we will put this cover back on here. Luckily, some of the nuts and bolts are still here. So I can at least make it so it won't fall off. Maybe we can even get a test drive out of this today. All right, so it looks like there's two nuts missing. Of course, everything on here is probably metric. Okay, let's put some gas in here. This here is a gas can. I got a tractor supply. It's a little awkward. A little heavy when it's full. But what's nice about it is up here, you do that and then the gas comes right out. So you don't have to push anything on the end of it. Like a lot of the spouts, you, you know, they're very cumbersome and they don't work that good. And then we let go. And eventually it stops. Then we can stand it back up, put the little cap back on it. It's a pricey gas can, but it works very well. So even if you just have a push mower and you want to put gas in, if you, if you do a lot of gas, a lot of different machines, it's very handy to have. So this... Squirting that again will give us a head start with getting this thing started. We won't have to crank it forever. I'll put the uh, air filter on there. I did check the oil before. It was good. Normally, you would wipe it off and check it again.
Give it another squirt. Supposedly, this carburetor was off and was cleaned. We'll see. Okay, so it's not running through the carburetor. So a couple things to check first. Make sure that this uh, anti-backfire valve is working. Of course, this has two wires going to it. One's going to be power, one's going to be ground. I don't feel anything happening. Doesn't mean it's not. I just don't feel anything. Normally, you can feel those click a little bit when they open and close. So we'll find the ground, which isn't hard to do on this engine. We'll just go right there. Now, this here should be the power wire. So we will disconnect this. Just spread these two apart, pull that out. And this one here should be the one that has power when we turn the key just to on position. This should have power. So we're getting power to this solenoid here but I can't feel that it's actually doing anything so now the next issue is I already put gas in it we have to take that out to check it, so we're going to lose a little bit of gas. So we'll put this pan under here. Should only be a little bit that comes out. What's going to be in the in the bowl or the carburetor? I like using a special clamp. These clamps are actually supposedly made for clamping brake hoses on the front of your car. Like if you take the caliper off. You use this to clamp the hose. I know some of you guys just, oh, I have vice grips that'll work on that. Well, that's fine. But I like to use this. It's actually made for clamping hoses. Another reason I like to use this, I tell myself that there's less chance of damaging the hose if I use that tool as opposed to vice grips. So it makes me feel better. Now, we're rotating this. I'm going to disconnect, uh, disconnect the ground wire there. So we disconnect the ground wire here so we don't twist the wire off. Because that wire definitely needs to be in good condition. Otherwise, there's no ground. Then we'll have to take this off that I plugged back in. There we go. Now we can turn this out. This tractor is about eight years old. If it sat for a while, there's a chance that this is gummed up. And it just doesn't want to move. The gas looks okay coming out. <laughs> okay. Well, this should not be a factor. It's already been modified, customized, hacked, if you will. So, 
There's no rubber tip on the end of this. It's already been made to, uh, to not cause a problem in case it doesn't work. So that's not causing our problem. Now this is the regular carburetor drain right here. It looks pretty clean in there. So there's really no reason for it to not run on this carburetor by what I see right now. Because there was definitely gas in the carburetor. Supposedly the carburetor was cleaned already. Well, we got this far. Let's take it apart. See what we end up with. Which means the cover has to come back off. So now we can work on getting this carburetor off of here. Now for the tricky part, figuring out how to get this linkage out of here. All right. So if we pull this all the way out like this, then we're putting some stress on it there. Really the best thing to do would be to take these studs out. I really don't want to do that. Well, somehow we have some water in there. So is it possible there was water in the carburetor? There's definitely some water in there. That will keep it from running right. Well, let's pull this spring off here. That out of the way. This turns almost far enough to come out of there. Now we got it off one stud. This guy here is giving us a little bit of problem. All right, well, this is my first time taking one of these off. I'm going to pull a stud out. I'm going to start with these special pliers and see if it even comes loose. Oh, yeah. All right. There we go. Got to get the lock washers to lock together. All right, so now we can take this out of there and then out of there. And we can rotate that and pop that right out. 
That's going to sit right there. There we go. Okay, let's see what we can get out of this carburetor. Start by taking this stud out of the way. Now, I was told that this carburetor was cleaned already. That's what I was told. Really need a socket for this. What an impact wrench works too. So apparently this can go anywhere, but it was facing the same direction as the fuel inlet tube. Well, I see dirt in there. I think I blew it out of the way. There's definitely water in here. Definitely some water in here. <laughs> well, we will see if that's open. I think it is. I don't think that's the problem. The main jet here, we're going to blow some carburetor cleaner through that. So we'll close this hole with a finger. We'll spray into this one. Try not to spray my eyes. So that's open. That's not a jet. That's just a passageway. The jet is in here. We should see gas come up through that tube. So, that is open now, without a doubt. The rest of the carburetor in here actually looks good. It really wasn't dirty inside, but it, it definitely did have moisture in it. How much? It could have been full and needed to suck that into the engine. But I did run it pretty much the first time I started it with the can. It ran enough that it should have sucked that. If there was water in there, it should have sucked it through. And we'll make it snug like that. Now, there's a name on this carburetor. Of course, I can't pronounce it. Here it gets in focus. H-U-A-Y-I. That's the name on the carburetor. Never heard of it, but... You know, I don't know everything, especially not with these kind of engines. So let's put this back on and see what happens. All right, well, we're going to put it back on the same way it came off. We're going to put these two studs on, put them through the carburetor. Get the carburetor on there.
That way we don't have to fight with the linkage. Yeah, that was on this side. Okay. Just like that. So we're not quite ready for that yet. So we're going to hook up this one first. That's the order we took it off. Put that spring back in. Now, if you lay this down the same way you took it off, it should be easier to remember how it goes. Now we can slide this on. Get these guys here started. I hate when that happens. Somehow this is in a different position. Even though I made sure to pay attention to where it was, it went back on in a different spot. Well, should be able to get this loose. There we go. That's better. So maybe that's the kind of thing you want to double check. But not the end of the world. And we'll hook all this up just so that it's not flopping around so it's at least hooked up we know it's not going to do anything but that's no reason to leave parts laying around off the engine <clears throat> at least make it look right that back on. Now we'll take the clamp off, let the carburetor fill up. So while we're here looking at it, we hopefully see that it doesn't overflow or anything like that. Now this one is going to need a new vent tube here. This uh, like the crankcase ventilation tube. Somehow it cracked open. And this here tube, that should go back to the gas tank. There's a little tube coming out of the gas tank for emissions. So that hose is going to need to be replaced. So we slide that back up there. Put that on. And we take these two nuts here, put these on. Well, while we're down here, we're going to put the engine cover back on because this engine is just going to start up and run perfect. We'll put the engine cover on this way. Get that one lined up. This one's back a little bit. There we go. Now we're back on where it should be. We'll get these two here. Put these guys back on. 
So this is the kind of thing you might run into if you buy something without hearing it run. Now the seller said, oh yeah, you just put some gas in it and she runs good. Well, you know, maybe it was just a case of it got some moisture in there. You know, it could have had some water in it before I got it. But we'll see what happens here. It's possible that the main jet was clogged where it just had a little film over it. I have seen that where the jet just gets a little bit of film. Sometimes you can see light through it, but it's just enough that the gas doesn't flow. The only thing that makes the gas flow through that jet is vacuum. There is no pressure, just not even gravity, really. The fuel sits in the bowl, and when air goes in here, in through the carburetor, it goes through a venturi where the throttle plate is, and that creates a vacuum. That vacuum is what sucks the gas through the jet to mix with the, with the air. So, if you have just a little film over that, like a little membrane, even though you might be able to see light through it, it could still be clogged, and the vacuum is not going to pull anything through that because the vacuum is just not strong enough. So everything in there has to be just about perfect in order for it to run correctly. Now, I'm going to put the hood back on and everything because... It's going to start right up and run, and we're going to get a test drive out of this. And maybe that'll be the end of the video. So, I've got my fingers crossed. Well, we'll get some of these tools out of the way here. All right, so we're going to squirt this one more time just to give it a little head start. So now we're going to give it a little, little choke. We're going to crank it over. got this running it actually runs pretty good now what I'm doing here is checking the charging voltage because this has a voltage regulator as opposed to just a diode so it has a higher powered charging system with more things that could go wrong so I'm just verifying that it is in fact charging the battery so that I don't have a problem down the road with a dead battery so on this particular one I got lucky on this, it worked out pretty good. Just needs a air cleaner cover and maybe a, maybe a deck spindle, which is not a big deal. So, you know, it, it was torn apart when I got it. 
so a little bit of work to put it back together I wasn't scared about getting into the carburetor issue so this is actually usable now the way it is so overall I think it was a pretty good buy but anytime you, t you buy something like this and you don't get to hear it run I always tell people if you don't hear it run you bought it not running and that's something that you have to keep in the back of your mind if you didn't hear it run you know it's not running it could have all kind of other issues could be a bad transmission the deck could not even work at all if it's got an electric pto that could be bad you know there's no telling it if you don't get to test it out you know you buy it at a yard sale or a flea market like this one here you know they listed it online for sale they said you know i got there oh it just needs gas you put gas in it it'll run it was nowhere near ready to put gas in it but i did get lucky on this one it doesn't have any major issues with it after i cleaned the carburetor you know so it, if videos like this are going to be a help for you please like and subscribe you know i want to keep doing this but you know more subscribers are always better uh, thank you see you in the next video